Hi guys, it's Tom with Heritage. Um, today we are fitting an inverter with some battery storage. So we'll have a look at the gear that we're going to be installing in a minute. This customer is on the Octopus Go tariff, which means that they get cheap electricity uh, between the hours of 12 midnight and 4 in the morning. So we've got this kit to try and sort of mitigate the rising cost. Here's the co-star today, Schmidt, Schmidt the dog. Um, so we're installing this gear to try and mitigate the cost of rising energy prices. What we'll be able to do is to charge the batteries during uh, the cheaper rate and then we dis uh, discharge it during the day uh, as and when required to yeah, just sort of balance things out. Yeah, so we'll install it. Um, don't know whether we'll get it all done today, might need to come back. Um, to, to sort of finish off, but then we can have a look at some of the functionality. And Mark from our wholesaler, ABM Electrical in Stockport, amazing guys, if you're watching this, the guy whose house I'm working on, he's already bought this, so <laughs> don't, shoot me, don't shoot me down for installing Give Energy. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the kit that we're gonna be installing, and then let's uh, get on with it. Right, so this is our inverter that we fit in it's a gen 1 give energy hybrid inverter this is the well it's the, the back of the inverter got a handy mounting bracket we've got some massive fans on the back for uh, you know dispersing heat from the unit um, there are there are certain limitations as to where you can mount this uh, i've just got to take some measurements but i think we're going to stick it on the wall down here somewhere the batteries which will open in a moment can be stood on the floor thank god because they're about 100 kilos that's a nine and a half kilowatt hour battery so it's the biggest one that give energy do um, so we're not actually using this in terms of pv you know solar panel input we're just using to, this to buy energy in from the grid at a cheaper rate, charge the batteries and then discharge it as and when required. So yeah, we don't need to, we're not generating any power here. We haven't got any PV arrays. Let's just have a look at the front of this beastie. So this unit itself is pretty heavy. You can see though, it's, it's relative, the footprint of it is relatively small. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not going to be difficult to find a place for that. On the front here, you know, when we get to uh, get this thing fired up, if you've got a PV array, you could see if you're generating, you can see if it's storing or drawing from the battery, you can see if you're pulling or selling back to the grid and then, you know, the load of your property. Got some big fat battery terminals here. A very satisfying on off. Um, we've got USB dongle slot for communication, various uh, energy meters and current clamps and what have you, current transformers, um, supply from the grid, and then it can work as um, almost like a UPS. So if there is a power outage, you can have dedicated uh, uninterrupted supplies there. Right, so the inverter needs um, some minimum clearances. So 300 mil, 30 centimeters up off the ground, um, 400 from either side with regards to, you know, where walls meet walls or walls meet ceilings. Um, so I'm just going to mount this pretty low down. Um, this is for, you know, access to the unit, but also to, you know, allow air to flow and to keep it cool. So yeah, we're just going to sort of mount it here somewhere and then we'll have the batteries floor stood over here. All right. So just got to try and get this flat on the wall. Um, the unit can't be tilted forwards. It can tilt back slightly, but you know, if required, but I want to get it, want to get it flat. So you see all this 
undulations in this stonework. I'm just going to try and chisel this flat. I was maybe considering putting a board on first, but we'll just see how easy it is to get the, the stone flat. And then there's some big chunky raw bolts to go in and, and hold this in place. Say hi, Schmidt. Okay, so we've got the inverter on the wall now. It's just taken me a little bit of time to chase that wall flat just to get the bracket on. Um, you see it's bang on level. Stop flickering light, please. Um, and actually, it's pretty much bang on that way as well. Um, you can have up to 50 degrees, apparently, tilt backwards, but no tilt forward allowed. So this wall does actually lean back a little bit, but just managed to get that level, which is good. Right, let's get the big old battery unpacked and see what we've got in there. Right, so we've got a nine and a half kilowatt uh, hour battery there. It weighs about 100 kilos. It's a numb beast. Um, so it's not gonna be wall mounted. It's gonna be mounted on the floor. All right, dog. But there's still gonna be a bracket attached to the wall just to stop it uh, flapping around and it's got uh, some nice solid rubber feet on the bottom. Um, what I'm having to do here, we've got a generation two battery, which has got a fancy new connector on the end of it. We've got a generation one inverter because that was the stock that was available to the customer. Uh, so I'm just having to uh, modify that with some ring crimps um, to connect to the terminals underneath. And then we've got a little data connection there for battery management. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll get that bracket on. Um, I'm just going to the wholesaler now to pick up uh, a little mini consume unit. So what you would have to do ordinarily if this was remote from the main consume unit is you would have to have some sort of AC isolation, usually a rotary isolator. But because we're right next to the uh, main board, what I'm going to do is mount a little Hager consume unit there's no surge protection in this board. Uh, I'm just very keen to make sure that, um, you know, there would be surge protection afforded to the inverter and the battery. So inside this little consumer unit, there'll be a double pole main switch for isolation. There's gonna be a surge protector device and there's gonna be a C-type uh, C 20 amp RCBO protecting that as well. And then we can just feed uh, this uh, this little consumer unit uh, with an MCB. The cable will all be on the surface. Um, belt and braces, I'm gonna use um, the tough sheath cable. So it's sort of like armored cable, but uh, without the armor. Um, because you, know, you can see there's lots of storage going on in here. It just affords a little bit more protection than running uh, just plain old twin and earth. So we're gonna come out of the main board to a little consumer unit uh, and then power the inverter from that. So I'm just going to go and get some bits and we'll be back shortly. All right, so we've got our little Hager consumer unit here. Um, into this enclosure, I can mount this uh, meter, which is required for the inverter battery setup, just to measure what's coming in, what's going out. Uh, that needs a six amp supply so we'll just fit a, an MCB in there um, we've got C20 RCBO to supply the actual uh, inverter and then very important it's now a regulation um, before it was uh, you know you could do a risk assessment but uh, now any new board will have surge protected device in there as well just protecting all this sensitive gear. So, yeah, I'm just gonna mount that down there next to the inverter. Uh, yeah, so let's get on with that. So that's gonna be our lineup. Just one blank in the end there. Um, just need to cut this down, so we only need three rungs, as it were, on the buzz bar. We'll get that, uh, we'll get that fit. Right, so we've got the Consume unit on the wall, just do me 
OCD bit. Anyway, right, put the consumer unit on the wall. SPD, uh, that links into line and neutral of the main switch and then earth cable into the main earthing terminal. We've got our supply coming in, six mil. Doesn't need six mil. Could have got away with something a bit, a bit smaller, but I don't know, just always like to sort of belt and braces things. Um, six mil supply, C20 for the inverter. Uh, this is coming out in 2.5. A tough flex cable, so that's only going, it's only going to there. Um, the meter needs uh, a six amp supply, so because this is all in the consumer unit, I'm just using a six amp MCB. We've then got the tails of the CT here, current clamp. Uh, just need to double check. I think that goes around the tails up there, you know, the main tail, so that it can monitor what's coming in what's going out basically so that's the consumer unit done um, I'm happy with that because it keeps everything neat and tidy in one place that board is dedicated to the inverter but yeah for what I think is really important here is the surge you know it's this setup the give or take uh, was about five thousand pounds at the time the customer purchased it i think it might have gone up a bit now so we want to protect that with an spd definitely right let's get the supply cable into the board right folks so that's the end of day one i need to come back tomorrow just to finish off um so what have we done so far we've mounted this on the wall uh we have adjusted the gen 2 gen 2 cable to fit the gen 1 inverter um, we've mounted a consumer unit slash SPD slash um, double pole AC isolator, the circuit protection for this. Uh, we've mounted the energy meter in there and we've given that a supply. Here's the clamp which is going to go around the tails. Um, and then we've got the circuit into the board. Uh, I'm going to leave this locked off so that the customer doesn't energise this by mistake because obviously, well, even though everything's isolated here, anybody fiddling could potentially turn that on and that cable would be live. So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to lock this off in a moment. Obviously, when I come back, we need to make sure that the battery is fixed to the wall. Uh, we need to connect up the battery. We need to give this a grid supply or, you know, Power from the circuit. Uh, all right, pal. Nearly done, and then it's time for something to eat. Um, there are some connections under here. Uh, there's one for battery management. Obviously, we've got the, the the ring terminals for the battery down here as well. I think then we'd be. I think then we're sort of ready to rock. So uh, next time I'm here, we'll juice all this up. You also have to uh, commission. Uh, this inverter and battery using the Give Energy cloud software, uh, which you gain access to once you become an installer for Give Energy products. Um, so we'll have a look at that. Maybe not the you know behind the scenes commissioning, but we'll get the app up and we'll see what we can see uh, with regards to all the functionality of this product. So I'll see you again shortly. Thanks for watching.